a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them, and they worked together. By trade, they were tent makers. Every Sabbath, he would argue in the synagogue and would try to convince Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was occupied with proclaiming the word, testifying to the Jews that the Messiah was Jesus. When they opposed and reviled him, in protest he shook the dust from his clothes and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on I will go to the Gentiles. Then Paul left the synagogue and went to the house of a man named Titius Eustace, a worshiper of God. His house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the official of the synagogue, became a believer in the Lord, together with all his household. And many of the Corinthians who heard Paul became believers and were baptized. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have won him victory. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication to the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord says, I will not leave you orphans. I will come back to you, and your hearts will rejoice. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father, he said to the disciples, A little while, and you will no longer see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying to us, A little while, and you will no longer see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father, they said, What does he mean? By this a little while, we do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, are you, dis are you discussing among yourselves what I meant when I said, A little while, and you will no longer see me? And again, a little while, and you will see me? Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn, but the world will rejoice. You will have pain but your pain will turn into joy. The Gospel of the Lord. So right now we're, we're all eagerly awaiting a vaccine. You know, the, this is sort of 
you know, some company come, announces something that they that a vaccine they're working on a vaccine and their stock shoots through the roof. We we are eagerly awaiting this. But I'm reminded uh, as well today of of something Stephen Corsi, one of our on our staff, uh, has said on a number of occasions. When when other parishes, other churches come to us and ask for help in in uh, getting started in an, an alpha, Stephen is sort of adamant in, in how the quality that he wants that alpha to, to look like, even in another parish. Because he says, you know, that what happens if you don't run alpha well, if you, you know, you, you don't do the meal or you just make it coffee or something like that, you don't do it the way it's prescribed. Every, all the pieces matter. And so what ends up happening is you end up being like vaccinated against alpha and you can vaccinate you can inoculate an entire parish against alpha by running it poorly because then people assume oh yeah i know what alpha is i know what it's like i know what the what happens there and so then they they don't get they're not they're not willing to 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 really do alpha properly they don't want the experience of alpha because it's an experience more than a course or uh, a group or anything like that and I was thinking, in a sense, that Paul, in the first reading today, runs into this sort of this inoculation that the synagogue, the people in the Jewish synagogue in, in Corinth, they've almost been inoculated against the idea of the Christ, of a Messiah. Yeah, yeah, we know what the Messiah is going to look like. We know what it's supposed to, who he's supposed to be or what he's supposed to do. So don't, don't tell us about this Jesus. We know. And it's like this inoculation against it. And Paul ultimately gets frustrated and he goes to the Gentiles and preaching this, this gospel to, to people who haven't been inoculated, who haven't been exposed in any way to the idea of a redeemer. Uh, um, but in the spiritual sense, because the Jewish people thought of the Redeemer in, the, in a literal, in a, in a political sense or a social sense. And so I think we all, you know, as much as we, vaccines can be a good thing if it's for this coronavirus, we all probably are inoculated against something in our spiritual lives. As well, for me, you know, for years I grew up in the 80s and I heard about the charismatic renewal and I saw some charismatic renewal events and I thought they were a little crazy and I thought there was, you know, and I used to refer to them as sort of charismatic crazy matics. And I thought I knew what it was. I was sort of inoculated against it. And I really, you know, and all I was really doing was preventing is cutting myself off, is inoculating myself against, uh, like, against the Holy Spirit in my life. That's, that was a tragedy. I did overcome it, thankfully. I sort of decided, okay, this isn't, I'm going to actually explore this. I'm going to actually be open to this. I'm going to try this. I'm going to see what this is. And, and I, I cut myself off, I realized, from the experience of the Holy Spirit in its full power. And I don't even think I get it in, its full, in the Holy Spirit in his full power, because I'm still probably afraid in some ways. The Holy Spirit is not just about the charismatic renewal and, and what I thought of it in the, in, the, in the 80s. And yet I cut myself off from that. But I think all of us are probably inoculated against some, some way in which God wants to manifest himself in our lives. There's some aspect of, of our faith, our spirituality, that we have probably inoculated ourselves against. We've already, we've, we've prejudged what it is. And so we don't want to, to really experience it. We don't really want it in our lives. We, don't, we think we know what it is and we can dismiss it. What if we were those Jewish people 2,000 years ago in Corinth? dismissed the idea of Jesus Christ being the Messiah. 
Jesus being the one who, who liberates us from our sins, who came to die for, for us, who loves us so much that he gave up his life for us. Maybe there's some part of our faith right now that we need to open ourselves up to to experience the fullness, the joy that Jesus wants to bring us.